Hello and welcome back to Remote Data Monitoring. We are within Training Unit 3, Industrial Control Systems and the Communications Interfaces they use. My name is Dr. Liam Moore. I'm from the Munster Technological University based in Cork, Ireland. This series of training has been brought from the Remain project, which is a EU funded project under the Erasmus framework. The objective of this training unit in its entirety is to understand current methods of communications and control systems within an industrial environment. We previously did training unit 3.1, which was internal data communications within the factory itself. We looked at process versus factory automation, mentioned some common protocols, and also mentioned a protocol called OPCUA, which is the protocol we're going to focus on within this training unit itself. So we'll start with an overview of OPC UA. Our objective is to be able to explain what OPC UA is and where it is used. So OPC UA, otherwise known as Open Platform Communications Unified Architecture, is a widely used industrial communication protocol that enables interoperability between different devices and systems in industry and Industry 4.0 applications. It is a platform independent or service orientated architecture that allows communication between different types of devices that can include sensors, controllers, and other industrial automation equipment. It is designed to provide a secure, reliable, and scalable method for tra transferring data between devices, allowing for real time monitoring and control of manufacturing processes. It is an evolution of an earlier open platform communication protocol, which was developed back in 1990 to allow communications between different types of devices and industrial automation applications. OPC UA improves upon the original OPC protocol by providing a more secure, scalable and interoperable architecture that can be used across different platforms and operating systems. It uses a client server module where the client requests data from the server and it responds to the requested data. It has become a widely popular communications interface within the factory environment. And the new OPC UA was created in 2011, combining the previous standards. As mentioned, there is a server client relationship implemented within OPC UA. This is a common model for data communications um, and would be familiar for anybody who's used the internet where you have uh, your client accessing data on a server every time you go to a web page. Um, the provider of all the resources within the OPC UA uh, client server relationship is the server itself. Similarly, again, to how if you go to a website, it provides the website and all um, other information and resource. And the clients are anybody who is utilizing the service or the resource that the server provides. A look at the OPC UA components are here. You have the OPC client, you have your OPC servers, and you have the assets that are interfacing with the server. So the client can get data via the OPC server, and that data can be related to any factory based asset that is communicating um, with an OPC server. The server itself forms the basis of OPC communications. Implementing the OPC standard and is the interface to the outside world for OPC. Servers themselves can be provided by different vendors and parties. A lot of hardware manufacturers now include OPC server to allow other systems uh, a standard access path. So it may be in your PLC, for example, where um, during your uh, programming of the PLC, you will set up the PLC to have an OPC server so clients can interface with the PLC and get the data they require. Third party software developers such as Capeware provide OPC servers as well. The server itself, the OPC server is converting all that data, let's say from the PLC. So the PLC might be communicating with uh, field devices via Modbus, Profibus, Profinet or whatever. So it converts all that data that it's gathering into OPC 
compatible format, the OPC client can connect to the OPC server and grab the data they need from the OPC server. The client itself is a counterpart to the server. Client applications can access servers to read data from the servers. And these clients could be SCADA systems, historians, or even the MES system as well. While ultimately OPC is a client server system, OPC is also implementing a published subscriber model for data transfer based on another protocol called the Message Queue Telemetry Transport, or MQTT, which we will cover in further detail later on in the course. Publish Subscribe removes the one-to-one -one relationship from a client server and replaces it with a client broker relationship. In this instance, all messages go through a central broker as shown in the little diagram below. Clients can publish data to the broker and they can subscribe from data from the broker or any data they're interested in. So multiple clients access one broker. You could also call that a server if you wanted to, but the whole purpose of the broker slash server here is to manage the data coming from all the other clients and make sure it's routed in the correct manner to whatever client requires. OPC uh, specifications themselves, uh, there is 24 specification categories. We've shown some examples before. There's security, transport, protocols, services, discovery, historical data, profiles. But there is many other aspects to the specification and would be a training course in its own right to cover it all. For example, Specification for security. There's an emphasis on security features, including encryption, authentication, and authorization to protect your data and ensure integrity of communications. This is what's making it ideal, I suppose, for an industry 4.0 perspective, is that security is baked into the specifications, um, which is something traditional operational technology uh, can sometimes overlook. And it also offers very uh, security profiles to adapt to different use cases. So Depending on the security requirements, you should be able to find a security profile to match your different devices. OPC UA also supports multiple transport protocols, such as underlying TCP IP, HTTP, AMTP, um, which enable communication over different network configurations, depending on whether you're working on a local, net local network or you want your data to be routed by another network. The services OPC U defines are reading and writing, so writing to or reading from um, OPC servers. It allows you to um, give a service namespace, invokes methods and monitoring data, changes and events. These services facilitate efficient communications between clients and services, or, or clients and servers. OPC UA also includes a mechanism for server discovery, so allowing new clients to locate and connect to OPC U servers on a network uh, and also discover these servers see if they exist. It allows specifications on what to do with historical data and how to access it. If you want to get data over a period of time, this is a useful feature to have. But as mentioned, there is a, a large category of specifications for OPC UA um, that need to be taken into account. Some of the limitations of OPC UA should also be considered. Complexity is one of the major ones, and you can see that just looking at the specifications here. OPC UA is a complex protocol with a wide range of features and functionality, which can make it challenging to implement and maintain. And that's particularly true for smaller organizations or those with limited technical expertise. There can be a significant cost in implementing OPC UA, cost in investments in hardware, software, and infrastructure. There's limitations on how scalable OPC UA would be, especially dealing with large volumes of data or complex systems. It's still vulnerable to cyber attacks, even though it does feature security specifications. And this is generally if it's not configured or implemented correctly, which ties back to its underlying complexity, uh, you can leave yourself vulnerable. So these are just some limitations to keep in mind around OPC UA. Thanks for listening on this OPC UA overview.
uh, we look forward to talking to you again in further training events.